This is the time for Celebration Valley Club. We are finally getting a tech raid team in Marvel Strike Force. In this video, we are revealing the kits and the reworks for this new Pegasus team, along with the new Undying team member. But these kits are not final. Scopely wants your feedback. So if you're ready to see what is in store for these new teams and ready to give your feedback, then you know what to do, Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Well, let's get right into it. Welcome to the Valley Flying channel. I'm Valley Flying. I hope you're having a great day. And if this is your first time here on the channel, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. At least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on the channel. Usually there's more. We got character reveals like this. We got gameplay videos, news videos, question and answer videos, everything that they help you in Marvel Strike Force. But this video is going to be a little different because the devs does did give us access to this test server they said we can reveal all of these characters but we cannot give any opinions on their kits because these kits are not final they're waiting to hear from you the community so uh, if you have any opinions on these characters their reworks any of their character design any of these teams let me know in the comments the devs do want to hear your feedback uh, also, we cannot show any gameplay yet because these characters' kits are not final, but let's get right into it. First kit, we are looking at the first team. We're looking at the Pegasus team featuring Kestrel, the Mark II version of Ironheart, a reworked version of Rescue, Darkhawk, and a brand new version of Iron Man as well. So two new characters that are already in the game. I'm surprised that we're getting a second version of Ironheart before we're getting some other other characters in this game but let's start this off we have kestrel here and if we go all the way down to the bottom of our patch if we see a call out to the pegasus team here allies are gaining 30 percent focus and 30 percent resistance as well that is pretty much all that she has uh, that's related to the pegasus team but her kit was so strong to begin with she didn't need that much uh help iron heart this is her kit here all right she has uh, attacking the primary target on her basic 240 percent damage applying defense down for two turns vulnerable up to a maximum of three prolonged duration of three negative effects excluding ability to block and stun by one in the raids if this character has four or more pegasus allies gaining immunity if this attack cannot be counterattacked. that is a long basic that she has and the t4 for that basic is going to add 60 percent damage to the primary target Prolonging the duration of all negative effects, excluding ability to block and stun by one. The special is going to attack. It's a three turn cooldown, as you can see. It's going to attack the primary and adjacent targets for 270% damage, applying defense down for two turns, applying slow to all enemies and in the raids. You're going to apply trauma to primary and adjacent targets. You're going to apply immunity to two turns to self and all adjacent Pegasus allies. So the placement will matter. This attack cannot be counter -decked. The T4 is going to do 30% more damage to the primary targets. And in raids, you're going to apply trauma for two turns to the primary and secondary targets. Moving on to the ultimate, it is a five turn cooldown. It is a three, you're starting off with three ability energy and you're gonna attack at all enemies, 300% damage. You're gonna clear two random positive effects from each enemy and is applying slow for two turns. Also applying an, uh, immunity for two turns to self and all Pegasus allies, applying stun to the primary target and in the raids, applying stun to an additional random enemy that does not have stun. Prolong your duration of all positive effects for self and all Pegasus allies by one up to a maximum of five. This attack will gain 50% extra focus for each enemy with vulnerable. This attack cannot be counterattacked. What the T4 does for the ultimate 50% damage to all enemies. And you're also applying stun to the primary target for two turns in the raids. This character has four or more Pegasus allies applying stun to another additional random enemy that does not have stun and the passive on spawn applying to deflect to self and all pegasus allies when an enemy drops below 50 percent health apply disrupted to that enemy gain 30 percent armor pegasus are, uh, allies are also going to gain 30 percent armor and in the raids on spawn fill speed for all pegasus allies by 15 percent plus 15 percent Per Pegasus ally on spawn, if this character has four or more Pegasus allies, generate two ability energy for self and each Pegasus ally, gain an additional 15% armor. Pegasus allies gaining an additional 50% armor as well. Lower armor by 30% for all enemies with vulnerable. And what the T4 does, when an enemy drops below 50% health, apply disrupted for two turns, and in the raids, an additional 15% armor for self and all Pegasus allies. And moving on to the reworks for rescue. 
uh, her basic. It doesn't, no call us to Pegasus here, but you can see what the basic does. Uh, in the special, we have some call outs to Pegasus as well. You we redistribute the health stolen to self and all Pegasus allies, bypassing heal block. You're still doing the rest of this stuff and you're redistributing 250 more health uh, with the T4 there. And in raids, you're also applying death proof and two deflects to self and all Pegasus allies. With the ultimate, you're clearing negative effects from self and all allies, healing self and Pegasus allies for 25% of this character's max health. Applying offense up to self and Pegasus allies for two turns. War and raids. Applying immunity for two turns for self and all allies. And raids. Applying speed up to self and Pegasus allies. And also with the T4 reviving a dead Pegasus ally with 60% health. And the passive here. Well, it is a long, long passive when this character drops below 50% health. Barrier that character for 10%. In raids and war, bury that character for an additional 10%. On turn, if this character has vulnerable, heal self in all power, armor, and Pegasus allies by 3% of this character's max health. On death of an Iron Man Infinity War ally, clear all negative effects from self, power, armor, and Pegasus allies, then apply immunity for two turns to self and all power, armor, and Pegasus allies, gaining 15% max health, power, armor, and Pegasus allies, also gaining that 15% max health. In war and raids, on spawn, barrier self and all power, armor, and Pegasus allies by 20% of this character's max health and in the raids on spawn applying defense up for two turns uh, to self and all Pegasus allies on death of any Pegasus ally fill speed bar for this character by 50% and generate three ability energy for self and what the T4 does is in the raids on death of Pegasus ally you're going to fill that speed bar uh, by 50% and generating three ability energy for self so pretty good rework we also have dark hawk here and as we see his basic uh, attacking the primary and adjacent targets 250 percent damage applying def offense down gaining offense up in the raids this attack has 30 percent extra crit chance but his character performs a counter attack or assist gaining deflect and a t4 is going to apply 60 percent more damage to primary and adjacent targets like offense down for two turns of primary and adjacent targets special three turn cooldown We're gonna spread three negative effects excluding stun from the primary target to all adjacent enemies uh, attacking the primary and adjacent targets 300 percent damage applying disrupted for two turns and defense down for two turns applying counter to self and all pegasus allies applying offense up to self and all adjacent tech allies and the t4 is going to spread negative effects from the primary target to adjacent enemies Applying offense up for two turns to self and all adjacent tech allies. So placement will matter on this team. The ultimate is a five turn cooldown. Three ability energy at the start. All enemies attacked by 340%. Like offense up to self and all allies in the raids. You're going to reduce the speed bar for all enemies by 5% plus 5% per Pegasus ally. Fill the speed bar for this character and all Pegasus ally by 5% plus 5% per Pegasus ally, and a T4 is going to gain 25% more damage per offense up on this character. Applying offense up for two turns for self and all Pegasus allies, and the passive, well, on self or any ally, crit heal self for 15% of this character's max health. When the character or a Pegasus ally uses their basic ability, generate one ability energy for this character and all Pegasus allies, any 10% crit chance per tech ally, Pegasus allies are also going to gain 15% crit chance. In the raids, you're going to lower the chance of all enemies with vulnerable, the crit chance of all enemies with vulnerable 30%. And Pegasus allies are also going to gain 15% crit damage. In the raids, you're also going to gain 30% crit damage. In the raids, Pegasus allies are also going to gain 15% crit damage. And let's move on to the last but not least member of this team. Iron Man, the Infinity War version of Iron Man. The basic is going to attack primary and adjacent targets for 90% damage. You're also going to gain speed up. And the T4 is going to give you 30% damage to the primary and adjacent targets. In the raids, you're going to reduce the speed bar by 5% per primary target for the T4. The special is a three-turn cooldown here. Attacking the primary target for 300% damage. Applying bleed for two turns. Rebound chain to five targets for 300% damage. Applying bleed for two turns. Applying speed up for two turns to self and all Pegasus and Thor Infinity War allies. And in the raids, applying ability blocks to the primary target, applying an additional bleed for two turns for all secondary attacks. And the T4 is going to give you 60% more damage to primary and secondary attacks in the raids. 
a belly block for two turns. The ultimate th uh, five turn cooldown, three ability energy at the start, attacking all enemies, 300% piercing, clearing three positive effects and applying defense down for two turns. If Kestrel is an ally, attacking all enemies for 510% piercing instead, applying blind to the primary target, spreading all positive eff effects, excluding taunt and stealth to a random Infinity uh, War Thor ally, applying speed up for two turns to self and all Pegasus and Infinity War Thor allies. Uh, in the rage, you're gonna spread positive effects, excluding taunt, and stealth the self and all Pegasus allies, and this attack is unavoidable, cannot be blocked. The T4, if Kestrel is an ally, 90% plus 90% damage to all enemies, applying blind for two turns to the primary target. And in the raids, applying blind and to all enemies with vulnerable. And the passive, when a positive effect is applied to this character, any a Pegasus ally or a Thor Infinity War ally heal all allies for 3% of this character's max health. When this character or a Pegasus ally drops below 50% max health, clear disrupted on that character, applying speed up and two death proof to that character. If the ally that dropped below 50% health was rescue, I stealth that character and taunted this character, gaining 30% damage and gaining 30% max health. And in the raids, any additional 30% damage, Pegasus allies are also gonna gain that 30% max health, which is lower the resistance by 30% for all enemies with vulnerable and a T4, Pegasus and Thor Infinity War allies are gonna gain 30% damage in the raids. Pegasus allies are gonna gain an additional 30% damage. And moving on to Juggernaut, Zombie Juggernaut, the newest member of this Undying team. Let's go look, take a look at his kit, his basic. And he's gonna apply two bleeds to the primary target, attacking the primary target for 290% damage. You're gonna chain to adjacent target for 270% damage. You're gonna spread all bleed, from the primary target to the secondary target. Counterattack braces chain. This attack is unavoidable. On war offense, if this primary target has bleed, attack the primary target for additional 10% of the target's max health. Cannot be blocked. What the T4 is gonna do, 60% damage to primary and secondary targets. The special is a four turn cooldown and you have all the ability energy to start. It's gonna be an AOE attack, 360% damage, applying slow for two turns, prolonging three random negative effects on each target, gaining three deflects and one taunt to a maximum of two, and on war offense, applying one trauma to a maximum of two to all enemies. This attack gains a thousand percent extra focus. This attack is unavoidable, cannot be blocked. The T4 is gonna flip taunt and immunity on all enemies. 90% damage to all enemies and prolonging the negative effects on each target. The ultimate for zombie juggernaut is also five turn cooldown, three ability energy at the start. And what you're gonna do is clearing all negative effects on this character. If the negative effects is removed, heal self by 5% per negative effect removed. Heal self for 10% of this character's max health, spreading all bleed from the primary target to all adjacent targets, attacking the primary and adjacent targets for 400% damage, 30% additional damage per bleed, plus 30% drain. This attack cannot be blocked. Odd war offense, prolong all bleed up to a maximum of three on each target, and this attack is unavoidable. The T4 is gonna give you 100% damage to the primary and secondary targets, plus 20% drain, and the passive, it is long, guys. Uh, on spawn, gaining taunt, when attacked, if this character has charged, fill speed bar on this character by 30% plus, 5% per undying ally. When this character drops below 50% health, clear taunt and heal block from self. You need plus two death proof up to a maximum of three, applying taunt to a random undead as guardian ally. So one of the Gregs. And when any undying ally is summoned for or revive, gain plus one charge up to a maximum of five. On death, if this character has five or more charge, revive with 50% of this character's max health plus 10% for each non-summon undying ally, then lose five charts. Stun cannot be applied to this character, gaining a thousand percent resistance or hundred percent resistance. Undying allies also gaining that hundred percent resistance, gaining 30% damage per charge on this character. And on war offense, it continues. On spawn, gaining two charge, gaining 10% drain per charge on this character. If this character's health is greater or equal to 50%, 
Health, uh, lower the resistance by 75%. This character's health is greater or equal to 50%. Enemies cannot gain speed up. And what the T4 does is that is what's going to give you 40% resistance for self on all, all undying allies and war offense. And this character's health is greater or to equal to 50%. Lower enemy resistance by 75% health. Oh, and that was long. There's a lot to unpack there, guys. Unfortunately, like I said, I can't give my opinion on these characters yet, but I will be giving it as soon as that uh, embargo is lifted on that. Let me know what your thoughts on these characters are. Let me know your thoughts on the Pegasus team. Let me know what your thoughts on the Undying team. And I will see you guys next time. And if you want to check out how this new Avengers team is going to play, make sure you check out the other video that we did today. It is up there. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Hulk fist bump. I'll be flying out. See you guys next time.